Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 199 doing a June 2015 speculation and investment video. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Lots of people are getting into modern. The market is just crazy. I'm going to be talking about that market today. But before I dive in too far, I just want to let people know why I do these videos. I don't do these videos to encourage people to corner the market and buy everything out. I do them out of a love and a passion for the game. The financial aspects of the game are a mini game in themselves. That if you can learn the financial aspects, you can save yourself a lot of money. You can trade into cards when they're inexpensive. You can trade out of them before they drop in price. And you can do a pretty good job of playing the game at little to no cost. I myself work at a nonprofit. I don't have much in the way of disposable income. Most of my collection has come from trading. I do a lot of trading. And this is how it's been since I was a kid. I also want to point out that there are other really great games out there that don't have the financial aspect to it. I don't believe you need the financial aspect to have a great game, but Wizards has done a good job both preserving the market and having an interesting collectible come out of what is a wonderful game. What drives the value in Magic is both that it's a collectible, but also that the game is played. The more people that play it, the more valuable the game is overall. First big piece of advice today is we are seeing more buyouts in Magic Finance than we ever have. One perfect example of this is Nourishing Shawl. It shot from a few pennies to $10 overnight. It made a fifth place finish at Grand Prix Charlotte. It is a card in a weird deck, great deck. I like Goya Vengeance decks. I think they're very fragile, and when people start sideboarding for them, you'll be able to play against them really well. But it is not a key component of the deck. It is a combo piece to the deck, a side piece. It's a card that doesn't have the casual appeal. It doesn't have multi-market appeal. This is the type of spike curve that is really unhealthy for the price of a card. I would avoid Nourishing Shawl unless you absolutely must build this particular deck. I'm not convinced that this is the best Vengeance deck out there, and the Shawl itself should not be a $10 card. I can see this as a 2 or $3 card long term. Cards that have proven themselves year after year after year, both as competitive and casual favorites, like Cryptic Command, those are cards worth investing in. Make sure that you have your playset. Maybe pick up a second playset so as they go up in price, you can trade into other cards that you need for your deck. I am trading for the new Cryptic Commands at 35, and I'm holding on to my full art text list. Long term, this is going to be the premier version of Cryptic Command. Just beautiful. Yes, it's a little tougher to play. It's probably one of the craziest cards they could have ever printed as a full art text list. It is really pretty though. Very happy to have a play set of them. On the other hand, cards like Oblivion Stone, I'm really divided on. I've got this as an avoid and a sell. It has just jumped way up in price recently because of the popularity of Tron. It's one of the few pieces of Tron that has not been reprinted, and it is also a casual EDH favorite. But realistically, this is not better than Ugin. In many situations, Ugin is a better card. And at the same price, I see O-Stone being reprinted well before Ugin, the price of this dropping back down to five or $10. So I am putting Oblivion Stone on my avoid list. On the other hand, Wilt Leaf Liege is a card that has dropped a lot recently. It is wonderful against Liliana, but Liliana the Veil has lost some popularity because of the collective decks that are going around right now. Long term, though, this is a great card. It's a very solid turn three drop. If you've got a Mana Dork turn one, it works really well in Lingering Souls decks. This was a $20, $30 card until the reprint. Now that it's down around the 5 10 range, definitely pick them up long term. If you're going to be an aggro player or even a mid rangey green white control deck, this is a solid card to have. It's also a great EDH card. Primeval Titan has dropped significantly. He's back down to the level he was after he got banned in EDH. 
This is a classic, wonderful card that is being played in Modern, and casual players love to play this, even if it's not allowed in EDH. It's fun in your kitchen table or reanimate or other fun environments. Great card overall. Blood Moon has over doubled in price. I told people to pick it up last month at the $20 range. It's up at $50 to $60. This is a staple that will see a reprint at rare. It could be in a dual deck, it could even be in a main uh, standard product, although I don't think so. It's kind of a feel bad card. It will probably be back in the next Modern Master set. Unless you absolutely need it for sideboards, I would get rid of yours now and pick them up after the next reprint. Monastery Mentor keeps falling. This card is great in Vintage, it's playable in Legacy, it's a casual favorite for EDH. I like this card a lot. I would definitely consider picking it up at this point. Collected Company has been making waves. It's doing really well right now. The ability to grab two cards, including a Kitchen Finx and a Tarmogoyf, is one of the major reasons Liliana's losing some popularity. I am holding on to these at 15. I will trade for them at the 10 to 12 range. Long term, it's going to depend on what answers people come up with to deal with this card in Modern. This could be the new pod in Modern and could move up to the $25, $35 range, or it could just stay around that 10 15 range. Either way, this is a very fun card to play. I like it a lot. I think it's going to be a staple in Modern for years to come. Cavern of Souls has jumped way up recently. I have always been a fan of this card. I'm recommending that people buy it or hold it at the $40 range right now. Long term, this could continue to go up in price. It is so useful for beating counter spells. It really helps you color fix in multicolor decks for your creatures. It helps you get around cards like Chalice of the Void on one. I played a Cavern of Souls with a Chalice of the Void out on one to get my Delver into play. I really, really like this card. Birds of Paradise is an interesting one. Quite speculation. Had a little bit of a discussion about this, and I believe MTG Reddit did also. Mark Rosewater recently pointed out that one mana, mana dorks, are not very likely to be seen in kind of your core set or your standard environment. A lot of people, I believe, are misreading this a little bit to say that we're never going to see them again. Uh, but I really like Birds of Paradise generally in modern. Birds allows for turn two Geist, turn two Lily. This appears to be an underplayed card. I understand why people like Noble Hierarch. The extra damage is really nice, but if you can throw a sword on a flyer. That's often a way to win. In a second turn sword followed by third turn swing of that bird, it's a fun way to win. I'm trading for extra birds of paradise at this point. I think somebody's going to brew and find a good way to use it, maybe even in a green black or green black white deck in modern. Dark Confidant is at its lowest point in a long time. It was going as low as $35. This last week, it's back up to 45 and 50 on most of the major sites. I would not trade them away at this point. I would buy them if you don't have a playset. Casual favorite card. And if Burn ever falls out of favor in Modern, this card will shoot up in playability and price. Modern Masters boxes. This is playing the lottery at this point. The estimated value of them is technically pretty good. But your resale value on those cards is pretty atrocious at this point. I would not buy them at retail currently. I see several places, including Card Kingdom, has them at 209 A few other places have had small amounts of them, as low as 180 recently. If you want Modern Masters, buy it at that 180 to 210 range. The thing that I haven't seen anybody do, though, is go all the way down to wholesale, or even a few dollars below. Yes, stores invested in this, but there's enough interest in it. Enough people want to buy lottery tickets and try to open a foil goif that it is definitely still selling above cost. And I think it's going to stay in this range until we're sure how much of it is printed, and then it will move back up to the 240 or so range.
This is not a standard card. No idea why I said standard on here. Another archetype that is done really well currently in Modern and is a great gateway archetype to get into Modern is Robots. Arcbound Ravager is a centerpiece of that deck. I would definitely pick them up at their current price, which is about $25. Long term, as people build the Robots deck, they're going to need Arcbound Ravagers. It's great trade material currently. Terminate has shot through the roof because of the GP. Yes, it's solid removal, but it's a common that's going to see a reprint and is just super hyped because of its performance in one GP. On the other hand, Gataxian Probe is still on my buy and trade for a list. Excellent card, did not see a reprint and may not for a significant period of time. This card is extremely powerful and still there for individuals in lots of different decks. A lot of people have asked me, what am I buying or trading personally? I am working on picking up one of each of the foreign black border duels. These are very difficult to price. From a speculation perspective, they have started to shoot up in price. Uh, they used to be pretty stable, but Star City Games started selling them on their site, and more of them are showing up in the GP circuit from vendors. Uh, if you are interested in black border duels, think that you've got about six months here before the market of them takes off incredibly. Although, unfortunately, Underground Sea has already shot up to a point that it's several hundred dollars. And Volcanic Island is probably the next to follow suit there. Uh, most of the other FBBs are pretty reasonable comparatively. They're very pretty. Snapcaster and Liliana both hit a hundred dollars at scg this week and a lot of people have asked do i get rid of my snapcasters now do i get out of them and i am actually recommending people hold on to both of these don't buy into them massively right now they've already gone up in price but i don't see them crashing specifically i'm going to go out on a limb here and talk about snapcaster mage I asked on Magic the Seattleing this last week which of the cards, Snapcaster Mage or Liliana, would hit 150 first. And a prominent Legacy player responded, neither of them will hit 150. And I disagree. Snapcaster Mage is a house. It's a blue card. It's super powerful. I like the way that people are currently comboing it with the commands. Overall, it is the blue Tarmogoyf. If you look back at Tarmogoyf's price five years ago, Tarmogoyf was about $70 to $80. I don't see how this card can continue to trail behind Tarmogoyf, which has been printed three times for much longer. I see this being the flagship rare card for blue. In standard, there are a few cards that I definitely recommend picking up, usually with regards to standard. I tell you guys to avoid everything unless you're playing it in a deck today because the long-term value on standard is very low. Soulfire Grandmaster and Bremaz are both eternal playable. They're both casual powerhouses, especially the Soulfire Grandmaster. I've seen this guy in some EDH decks just do amazing stuff. Now they are both very reasonably priced at $12 and $9. Definitely start trading for them. If you're going to put cash out for standard fetch lands are still the way to go followed by mana confluence great long-term eternal land it's up there with city of brass and its usability i'm gonna have a rules video talking about the difference between the two later but these are all still on my buy list right now is the time to reach out to your local game store reaffirm your commitment go in buy a few packs buy some singles and make sure to get on the list for from the vault angels we don't know what's going to be in it. It could be amazing. I am on the list at my local game store to pick up a copy of this. I've got a lot of spoilers coming out for Origins. This is the one that's most exciting to me. I'm not sure what the value of a White Mythic really is. Every time I've suggested buy a White Mythic recently, 
the Hawaii Mythics cost over time has went way down. This appears to be playable in other formats besides standard. It's a very interesting card. It's really going to depend on what the pre-order price is. This comes out at the $10 or $15 pre-order price. I'm definitely picking it up. If it comes out at the $30 or $40, I'm going to avoid it for a little while. I like the design of the card. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm super excited about getting more spoilers coming out here for Origins. Thanks. If you guys like my speculation videos, please crush that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. You guys make this channel possible. The angels have all been sent out at this point. Um, they will be available later this month for individual donations. Thanks so much. Take care.